Friday night in New York City, and that means it's time for the semifinals of the Big East Championship. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena for what should be a very exciting night of basketball. The top seed of the conference is here. The Georgetown Hoyas looking to win this tournament for the first time since 1989. Welcome to our continuing coverage of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. This is the 2007 Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. And in the first game of the two semifinals, we'll bring you tonight, we've got a couple of ranked teams, the number one seed in the Big East, Georgetown, against the number four seed in this conference, Notre Dame. A look at the brackets right now with the conference. Our second game tonight that we'll have for you right after this one right here on ESPN. It has held to form here in the Big East. Number two, Louisville, and number three, Pittsburgh. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you. Glad you're along with us here in New York for what figures to be a terrific night of basketball. And if you like teams with contrasting styles, you're really going to like game one. Absolutely. Two teams, very intelligent and pretty good at what they do. And beginning with Georgetown, you know, their system is punctuated by balance, discipline, and patience. And their ability to read and react just makes it so difficult to really guard them, particularly if you try to double team. Guys understand where to go when players are double team. And Notre Dame, obviously, up tempo, that's the key. In transition, they'll push it up the floor. They've got the athletes to do it. And the number one offense in the Big East, certainly they can shoot the three in transition. They just make it very difficult on opposing defenses. They had three players with 20 or more in the win over Syracuse yesterday as we take you to our Star Watch presented by American Century. One of those players, Russell Carter, 24 points. First team all Big East this year. For Georgetown, the player of the year in the Big East Conference this season, junior forward Jeff Green. Such a well-rounded player, so much to like about his game. With more on Green, here's Mark Jones. That's right, Dan. Green, the uh, first Georgetown player to win the Conference Player of the Year award since Alonzo Mourning did it some 15 years ago. But even more impressively, Green now joining the lofty status in the pantheon of the Georgetown program, up there with Reggie Williams, becoming just the second player to amass 1,000 points 600 rebounds along with 300 assists. Now, Thompson, the third, the head coach for Georgetown, told me that Green is the smartest player that he has ever coached in his coaching tenure, and that gone are the days when he used to have to yell at Green saying, Jeff, you're dribbling like a center. He's really <laughs> developed his game, guys. He really has. He can do so many things to help a team win above and beyond just scoring the basketball. Let's check out our starting lineups tonight. We begin with the Irish Colin Falls as deadly an outside shooter as there is anywhere in the country. Tory Jackson has done a marvelous job stepping in as a starter in the middle of the season. And for keep an eye on Luke Herringote, a freshman who brings a tremendous amount of toughness to the Notre Dame front court. Rob Kerr's improving, getting better and better every year. For Georgetown, up front, they are huge, featuring 7-2 Roy Hibbert in the middle, Green and Dewan Summers, both with huge wingspans as well. Just a very big front court for the Hoyas. Court, Jonathan Wallace, one of the underrated players in this league, and like Colin Falls, a terrific outside shooter. Tonight's semifinal of the Big East Championship, presented by Aero Postal, is available on ESPN HD. Now, this should be a good one, and Notre Dame fans hope it's better than the regular season meeting. That was back on January the 6th, just the second conference game for the Irish, their first conference road game, and they were beaten soundly, landed by Georgetown. The Hoyas led 18-2 in that game and won 66-48, but with players like Heron Gody, the development of Jackson, Mike Gray feels his team is better and tougher and smarter and a lot of good things more than they were back at the beginning of January. Well sometimes you know that bitter pill that they had to swallow in the first game ultimately does good. It's the remedy and the experience should make Notre Dame Notre Dame that much more ready to face the Hoyas and their athleticism. You saw Georgetown has not been to the championship game of this tournament since 96 has not won it since 89. Notre Dame in its 12 year history in the Big East has never been to the championship game just their second trip to the semifinals. So these seniors Colin Falls Russell Carter 
Awfully excited about this opportunity and their first opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament. And there is Tory Jackson. And what a story he's become. Kyle McElarney was the starter, suspended after his arrest for possession of marijuana, is reportedly going to re-enroll in school in the summer and rejoin the team next year. But Jackson has been instrumental in their success in the last couple of months. Well, you can see the confidence build in Tory Jackson with every game, every possession even. Hibbert. And Heron Gody playing some tough defense on him, giving up about six inches in height, but affected that shot. Well, Notre Dame's going to have to match the physical play that Georgetown is going to apply. Bottom line is Georgetown likes to switch. They like to get up and really not give you any room to breathe. Georgetown was sensational in the early going against Villanova yesterday. Took a 26-2 lead but then kind of allowed the Wildcats back into the game. Wound up winning 62 to 57. Notre Dame defeated Syracuse 89 to 83. And it'll be out of bounds off Hibbert back to the Irish. Mike Bray's Notre Dame team endured such a tough season a year ago. I think fans all around the country will remember all of those heartbreaking defeats in overtime, double overtime at the buzzer. They have played well this year, far exceeded expectations. And again, for the first time for any of these current Notre Dame players, they're headed to the NCAA tournament. No basket. Kurz is fouled before the shot. Well, again, just as we saw yesterday against Aaron Gray, what Marquette tried to do to get Gray out of the game, he set a lot of high screens, forced Gray to step out and keep him out on the floor. Same thing here with Roy Hibbert. Foul on Summers, his first. Now missed opportunity by Carter. Jeff Green back the other way, lost the handle, found it, and scores. Well, that's just aggressive play right there that Jeff Green understands. He can take that ball with his size and his agility. He can take it deep as he wants to. Speaking of as deep as he wants to, Colin Falls, who has made more threes in Big East Conference games than anybody in the history of this league, drills a 24-footer. Well, 80% of his field goal attempts are from beyond the arc. He's averaging 15 points a game, so that's a lot. Gowan Summers knocks down the foul line jump shot. He's a freshman, but he's really come a long way, learned the system, and has become a valuable player for the Hoyas. Herringote over Hibbert, a little strong with the jump hook. Yeah, jump hook also a little far away from the basket, but I think that was one of those anxiety shots. You know, you got everything built up, and you might as well let one go just to feel good about yourself on the floor. Aaron Gody's ultimately going to settle down. Aaron Gody made the Big East All-Rookie Team, averaged 11 and a half points, six and a half rebounds per game. Baseline jumper not there for Green. Here's Carter, another guy who was a bit player as a freshman and a first-team All-League player as a senior. How many guys in this tournament on all these teams, Len, have we seen? From Aaron Gray to Russell Carter to Roy Hibbert, who have just gotten better and better and better every year. Well, I've maintained that the longer you stay in college, the better you're going to get. And that's, again, contrary to what most people say with some of these guys who are coming out early. You stay in this game, you learn a system, continue to practice and develop fundamentally, you're going to get better. Wallace looks inside for Green, and he threw it right into the hands of Falls. Notre Dame's own starting to bother Georgetown. Balls another look, his second three of the game. What a start for the Irish. Well, we told you at the beginning of the telecast, Notre Dame, the number one offense in the Big East. They love to push it up in transition and not afraid to take three. John Thompson, the third, needs an early timeout. What a different beginning for Notre Dame than the regular season game when they were smoked early by the Hoyas. Colin Falls hot from the outside in the early going, and the Irish are up seven. Back in New York, along with Len Elmore, Mark Jones, I'm Dan Schulman. The 2007 Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. Semi-final number one. Colin Falls took 17 threes against Syracuse's zone yesterday, made seven of them. He's already got a couple of threes here tonight, and the Irish are off to a great start. Say what Heron Gody just did is what they need to do against Roy Hibbert all game, pushing him out away from the basket. That one step makes the difference. Pretty clever move there by Jonathan Wallace. Jonathan Wallace, 
Honorable mention, all Big East, but he really gets a lot of things started. Nice dump down. Kerr's with a left hand and count the basket. And now we'll step aside for the under 16 immediate timeout. What a start for Notre Dame trying to advance to the Big East title game for the first time ever. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Aero Postal, providing scholarship through sponsorship and in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at nbusa.com. We're back to New York City and a great start for Notre Dame, up 13-6 to on Georgetown here in the semifinals as Len Elmore takes us inside the play. Well, everyone knows that Notre Dame this year, high-octane offense, and particularly in transition, they want to push. Jeff Green's Aaron shot. He's being guarded by Russell Carter. And look at the push right here. Take a look at the shot clock. Three seconds have elapsed. Russell Carter drains the three. That's high octane. And I'd say that shot is premium. <laughs> and Mike Ray, he'll acknowledge that every now and again his team will take a shot or two that they shouldn't. But he says that's okay. He wants them to play with a with a free mind and with confidence and to be relaxed. And he'll tolerate some bad shots because he knows the vast majority of them are going to be good shots. They is a talented offensive bunch. So Notre Dame applying a little full court pressure again, trying to continue to speed this tempo. Georgetown can play different speeds, but the tempo we're looking at right now absolutely benefits Notre Dame. 66-48 was the score for Georgetown when they met back in January. Wallace misses the three. Rebound Rob Kurz, who moved into the starting lineup this year. Heron Godey joined in midseason, replacing Luke Zeller. And again, right now, this is the toughest team that Mike Bray probably has had in his tenure in South Bend. Foul on Roy Hibbert as we bring in Mark Jones on Russell Carter. Yeah, Russell Carter, one of a couple of players along with balls that have never played in an NCAA tournament while at Notre Dame. So to help further motivate his teammates, guys, back in November, he took a watch that the team was awarded back in the NIT tournament the previous season took it into the locker room and taped it up on the team's bulletin board and underneath it he wrote a caption a message to the team that said no NIT back to you guys I'm our three years in a row the Irish have been in the NIT somewhat of a controversial snub if you will three years ago and they were nine and seven in the league had a lot of quality wins but Mike Bray told Mark and Red and myself before the game when they're sitting there on Sunday and they hear their name called and they know they're going to the tournament right now but Mike Bray the first thing he wants to do is look and see the facial reaction of his two seniors Falls and Carter that's a three for Dewan Summers the interesting thing to see what happens with Notre Dame right now is Roy Hibbert picked up a silly foul that may ultimately cost him you know, he's got to make sure he makes Heron go to shoot over and he doesn't have to reach Balls misses the three. And that way you stay out of foul trouble. Those are the fouls that last foul by Hibbert to put Heron Gody on the line. Those are the ones you wish you had when you're in foul trouble in the second half. And Heron Gody's got the mentality to try to take advantage of that and go right into the chest and chin of Hibbert. He's not going to back off because he's 7-2. Lazy pass right there by Summers. Difficult for Hibbert to handle. Heron Gody. And the Irish missed an opportunity. Heron Gody got caught in between. Do I shoot? Do I drive? Do I pass? When in doubt, fire. <laughs> Falls, fouls Jeff Green. Championship week continues on ESPN and ESPN2 later tonight. We'll bring you the second to semifinal for the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. Number two seed Louisville, number three seeded Pittsburgh, and over on ESPN2 ACC Tournament quarterfinal action, it'll be Wake Forest against Virginia Tech. Interesting game in the ACC earlier today. Looked like Miami had Boston College the whole way. And BC managed to find a way to win that game as Luke Zeller and Zach Hillsland now check into the game for the Irish. They've got some depth up front. Well, speaking of the BC Miami game, towards the end, you can't help but be impressed with the demeanor of the Boston College Eagles. I mean, it totally reflects Al Skinner. Cool, calm, yep. collected under pressure. And that's how they were able to come back from a double-digit deficit. If you haven't seen a whole lot of the Eagles, get to know the name Tyrese Rice. He had a career day today. And uh, the young fellow is not shy about taking shots, but he's got a gift to score. Oh, Tory nice. Jackson 
shaking his man, and the floater goes. He just blew by Dewan Summers. Well, we told you, with every possession, you see Torrey Jackson's confidence grow to the point where he believes he's the man now. And now. Take a look right here, just in an isolation situation. Kill a crossover, jump stop. You know, Torrey Jackson, only 5'10", not afraid to venture into the woods among the big trees. The Georgetown now, Roy Hibbert has gone to the bench. Patrick Ewing Jr. is into the game. Green, the offensive rebound, and look at that finesse. Look at that agility as he spins and lays in the little jump hook. He's not conference player of the year for nothing no. now. JT3 kept telling people he does so much more than the score, and he's a 12, 13-point-a-game guy, but the, the rebounding, the passing, boy, the seniors came to play tonight, didn't they? Carter with his second three. Falls already has a couple. Good ball movement by the Hoyas, and they wind up with a high percentage look. No weak side rebounding, though. Everybody on the strong side, and when you get guys shooting the ball, you got to get to the weak side. Give yourself a chance. Carter, not just an outside shooter, also has a great mid-range game. Can put the ball on the floor and pull up for a jumper. Luke Zeller, former Mr. Basketball in Indiana, misses the three, but what a great tip in by Zach Hillsland. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about on the Georgetown end. You need to have somebody on the board, particularly on the weak side, to at least get a hand on the Aaron shot. If Notre Dame can have an even rebounding battle with Georgetown, they're going to cons consider that a moral victory. Ewing missed a slam. Carter at the other end has it blocked by Green. Notre Dame looking for a foul. A bit of contact on Carter's drive. Jesse Sapp. Doesn't get the bounce, follows the miss, and then fouls Russell Carter. Good up and down pace to this one, and a very good start for Notre Dame and their two talented seniors, including Russell Carter, stepping back and drilling his second three of the night. Back here at Madison Square Garden, the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal, semifinal number one in the Irish, up nine on the top seed in this conference, Georgetown, as we dive into our Big East Championship storylines. First time since 2003, the top four seeds have advanced to the semis. No three-peat for Syracuse after the Irish eliminated them yesterday. And hard to believe, Lynn, that Georgetown has not won this tournament since 1989. That, of course, back in the day, the Big John, John Thompson, the second, now JT3 coaching, and this is a very different style of Georgetown team, but they've certainly got the talent to win this tournament. John Thompson, we were sitting chatting before the game, kind of reminiscing a little bit. I remember when he was a coach at St. Anthony's High School, walked up to me my freshman year at University of Maryland, and sat down and talked for a long time. One of the most important figures in college basketball during his time as the head coach at Georgetown. Patrick Ewing Jr. Mr. Energy off the bench. Didn't miss that one. And again, excellent anticipation. And Georgetown had to get back to, you know, moving their feet, playing their guys physically, but also playing it honest. And you see now animation from the Hoyas. Zeller's three rolls in. That's already the fifth three of the game for game. See, the value of having big guys who can shoot the long ball is the fact that usually on that front line of defense are guards, and Zeller had no problem shooting over. Hibbert has returned for Georgetown using the glass screen, finishing Hibbert. Look at Jackson. Wow. He is fouled by Jeff Green. Right there, just shooting the gap. Carter never came to the ball. And Roy Hibbert back in. I'm sure he had a talking to about getting more assertive inside the paint. Don't allow people to push you around. At the line, Torrey Jackson, the freshman from Saginaw, Michigan, has mentioned he took over for Kyle McElarney after McElarney was suspended 
And Mike Bray called in his captains at that point. Falls, Carter, but occurs, and he said, listen, guys, this guy gets the keys to the car. He's our point guard. He said, if you roll your eyes at him, he's not going to be able to play as well as he can play. His confidence is going to suffer. You've got to get on his side. If he misses you when you're open, he'll get you next time. But you've got to get on his side for him to succeed. They embraced him, and he has thrived. Well, again, he's just an extraordinarily talented, smallish point guard. Plays with an awful lot of confidence, and a lot of that confidence is fueled by his teammates supporting him. Sapp is fouled by Zeller, who picks up his second, but it, and it shouldn't be a big problem for the Irish. They've got a lot of depth up front for players that Mike Bray rotates in and out. You know, if you're looking for cohesiveness, there's no room for negativity. You know, certainly you can call a guy out if he's making a mistake, if he's not hustling or something like that, but in the end, it comes down to support and encouragement. Mike Bray talked about playing as much zone as he could against Georgetown, trying to take the Hoyas out of their rhythm. Good defensive play there by Zeller. Jackson has been forcing the issue every time down the floor. That was Zeller running the floor for the tip, and they're getting some great minutes out of Luke Zeller, whose minutes have really dwindled in the second half of the season. Well, Zeller sees an advantage. He can run the floor. He's a faster runner than Roy Hibbert. If he gets down the floor on both ends, he's going to have an advantage. He's going to get to the ball quicker. What a difference than the game between these two teams back in early January. Sap penetrates, and the teardrop goes down. Jesse Sap taking over as a starting guard this year. Keep in mind all the talented players who departed the program whose eligibility expired after last year for Georgetown. Brandon Bowman, Ashanti Cook, Daryl Owens. They lost three quality players, yet still a routine land that many feel has the ability maybe to get all the way to Atlanta. Well, you look at what they've done. They've won 13 out of their last 14. They had some early season losses, but they've more than made up for it. There was a streak where they won 11 games in a row from mid-January till the end of February, and they were probably the most dominant team in the Big East and obviously the number one seed in this tournament. Ryan Ayers, the son of former Ohio State coach Randy Ayers, into the game, a very good outside shooter. Tyler Crawford into the game for Georgetown. Rattles out on Zeller. And you see what Zeller is able to do. He's got to draw Roy Hibbert out from the middle. Yep. And that gives Notre Dame a great deal of confidence to put it on the floor and beat people off the bounce. Just as we've seen Marquette try to do that when they play Pittsburgh with Aaron Gray. Notre Dame trying to get Hibbert out of a comfort zone in this game. Zeller playing with oh, two nice. fouls, and Hibbert spins right around him for the flush. Now more and more. Not amazed, but certainly impressed with Roy Hibbert and his mobility, increased mobility. Last year, I thought he was on the verge, and this year, he's just showing me something. Russell Carter's showing people something here tonight. And has he got a bounce in his step and a look in his eye tonight? That's already his third three of the game. Yeah, Russell Carter's flexing a little bit. Yep. Now remember for these seniors Carter and Falls this is the best season that they have had that their team has had and it's getting better by the trade shooting the three in transition if you can do it it's one of the most dangerous weapons that you can have and you can utilize against opponents because everybody's focused on getting back into the paint to protect the basket you pull up behind that arc and you break some hearts Couple times a year, Notre Dame has these kinds of nights. Shoot. First semifinal of the night. Well, we talked about it before we went to break. It was a very memorable football season for the Big East Conference. In a football context, capped by a terrific performance in bowl games. They went 5-0, and as you can see there. Wins uh, highlighted by Louisville in the Orange Bowl. West Virginia, Rutgers also winning their bowl games. And uh, the conference capturing the Bowl Challenge Cup, which ESPN awards to the conference with the best winning percentage in bowl games with a minimum of three bowl games played. Now, a few moments ago during the timeout, Commissioner Mike Trangizi of the Big East was awarded the cup by John Wildack, executive president uh, for ESPN, and had a chance to share some time and thoughts with Mike Trangizi, who said that the performance of the Big East in football this year helped quiet guys, a lot of the skeptics who questioned the viability of the Big East Conference in a football context and uh, has helped lay an even stronger foundation for the Big East. Back to you guys. 
And right now, Jonesy, there are no skeptics about this league in terms of basketball. Uh, Mr. Trangisi right now is thinking about how many teams they'll get into the dance, where they may go. Is West Virginia going to get in? Well, the irony of the situation is, obviously, when the ACC raided some of the teams and the Big East tried to replace with other schools, they thought they were building a basketball conference. And obviously, you take a look now, and they're a football dominant conference right now. Foul on Kurz. Green to the line as we go to Dave Revson with the Sports Center 30 at 30. Thank you, Dan. Islanders forward Chris Simon suspended indefinitely by the NHL today after hitting the Rangers' Brian Holweg in the face with his stick yesterday. Disciplinary hearing set for tomorrow. Number one, Ohio State, a winner over Michigan in the Big Ten tournament today. 15th straight win for the Buckeyes. And number two, Kansas wins its ninth straight, tops Oklahoma. Highlights on Sports Center following Pitt Louisville news anytime. Now, uh, Dave, interesting day of basketball. You mentioned the Michigan loss to Ohio State. Florida State lost to North Carolina. Another supposed bubble team. Kansas State defeated Texas Tech today. So a big win for Bob Huggins. And interesting goings on down in the SEC right now. Mississippi State beat Kentucky today. Arkansas beat Bandy. Mississippi State and Arkansas will play in a semi. So one of them is heading on to the SEC final as Russell Carter knocks down another jumper. This one's the two. He's got 14 points already. Russell Carter so far is unconscious, but you mentioned it. You can see in his body language that he's in a zone right now. From the first three he made, he ran back down the court on D, flashing three fingers. He's feeling good about it. Notre Dame has obviously come into this game with a lot of confidence. Well, you know, this is one of the first times in a long time that Notre Dame has come into this tournament not fretting about whether they're going to make it to the NCAA tournament or not. They've got their bid behind them. It's locked up. And now they can relax and just play basketball and try to be a part of the tradition of the Big East tournament and get some gold. Hers has it rejected. Sapp spins out of trouble. Numbers for the Hoyas. And it'll be out of bounds to Georgetown. You know, that's a huge gorilla off your back when you can come in here and play yeah. without worrying about postseason. And again, in the 12-year Notre Dame history in the Big East, this is only the second time they've made it to the semis. They have never made it to the final. And there were a few years, when you and I would do the tournament. It would seem they would have that noon game on a Wednesday, and they would lose. They'd be the first team eliminated. They, they would hardly get to New York, and they'd be going home. And they've had a nice long stay here this year. Crawford misses the three. And the rebound and the slam for Dewan Summers. And, you know, despite the 12-point lead, you know, Notre Dame's been doing it with extraordinarily hot shooting from the perimeter. I think they get some balance now. They're going to find some easy baskets, continue to build this lead because you live by the three, sometimes you perish by the three. They perished by it in their game against Georgetown in January. Hibbert blocks Terengote's shot. And then Hibbert comes up with a rebound. Boy, 7-2. Sometimes he doesn't even have to leave his feet to come up with an easy rebound. Green counted it. He's heading to the line. The Georgetown continues to chip away, chip away. They're going to rely on the fact that Notre Dame can't stay that hot from outside. And also, in the process, let's send a few messages. Heron Goldie, I think, heard it. And then in transition, Jeff Green. Again, it's not gaudy, but what he does is so important. And right there, that was a very, very difficult shot. Hibbert sits down. The foul was on Kurz, his second. He goes to the bench. And at the line is Green. And so Carter has also gone to the bench now for Notre Dame. Falls a couple of early threes. He's been quiet since. Notre Dame had an abysmal time shooting three against Georgetown a couple of months ago, but off to a great start tonight. Falls from the corner. The eighth three of the night for the Irish. Carter's got four of them. Falls has three. Zeller the other one. And that was an extremely difficult shot because it was challenged. The bigger guy's hand in the face doesn't matter to fall. Green triple team finds Ewing. Still plenty of time on the shot clock for the Hoyas. Our second semi tonight, Louisville and Pittsburgh, right after this game here on ESPN. 
What a move. DeWan Summers is going to be a player. I think he already is. He, he might have to defer to Green and Hibbert for a while. Nice look inside. And an offensive foul on Hillsland. He might have had more space than he thought he had in there. Well, you got to catch, turn, and locate. College basketball on ESPN continues tomorrow night right here. It's the championship game of the Big East presented championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. The Big East championship presented by Aeropostal. The winner of this game against the winner of our second semifinal between Louisville and Pittsburgh. Nine o'clock Eastern also available on ESPN HD. Georgetown and Connecticut have each won this tournament six times the most of anybody in the league. And we've got Jeremiah Rivers in the game right now with the basketball. A freshman guard for Georgetown and the son of Celtics head coach, Doc Rivers. Good position for Green inside. Doesn't get the bounce. And it's going to be out of bounds for Georgetown, I believe, when we come back. Both teams stepping up, trying to head to the final here in New York. Will again. Holy Cross Bucknell rivalry, the best rivalry in the Patriot League. Ten point lead, Notre Dame over Georgetown, late first half, and the Irish Lynn are red hot from the perimeter. Well, they certainly are, and again, it's the most difficult thing to guard in transition is a three point shot because as you watch Notre Dame rain the threes, look at where the defenses go for the most part. Everybody falls back into the paint, to start retreating, and Notre Dame just spotting up. And Russell Carter right here, I mean, he had a pass to the basket instead got that hot hand going. He just said, I see that line, and that line is mine. And look how hot the team is. 57 points in the second half against Syracuse yesterday. Already 40 in the first half here tonight. And the Irish can do this. They scored 103 points up at the Carrier Dome in a regular season game this year. And they're doing it tonight against one of the best defensive teams in the country. Georgetown averaging only 56 points allowed. Green on the inside. He's got 13 already. Closing in on his average. Rivers right up in the grill of Falls, forcing him to put the ball on the floor. They know Colin Falls is a catch and shoot guy, and they don't want to give him any space. Jackson from the free throw line. He's having himself some kind of a night. Yesterday against Syracuse, nine assists, just a couple of turnovers. Also had five rebounds, four steals. So much for a freshman getting nervous in his first taste of postseason play. Well, he finished in the top ten in assists, steals, and assist turnover ratio. Reggie Greenwood and Bob Donato conferring to see if they had the same call. They do, and it's going against the Irish. Well, Torrey Jackson can be the X factor right here. His ability to create for himself and others in close game situations could be a huge factor. And again, it comes down to the confidence. Good start for Jackson. Third foul, though, for Notre Dame's Luke Zeller. He's given them some good minutes off the bench. He'll sit down right now, and Rob Kurz will return. Kurz has two. Yeah, I think Georgetown recognizes they continue to get good position. They continue to crash their offensive glass, continue to play defense, and start putting a lot of guys in, trying to wear out Notre Dame. This could be a, a battle of attrition. And down the stretch, they should be able to chip away and make this a close game in the second half. I think the officials were determining who the shooter should be, and it's definitely going to be Green. You've seen a lot of Green over the last three years. What do you like best about his game? Well, first of all, I think that he's a guy that understands how to play. You know, he'll size up a situation and, and make the best of it. If somebody has a better shot than he has, he's going to find a way to get him the ball. But he just doesn't settle for being able to throw bounce passes and maybe hit an occasional jump shot. He's a guy that'll post you up, crash on the weak side. You know, he's a complete player. Defensively, you'll see him get down and dig in. 15 first half points for the Big East player of the year. Jackson gets inside and is fouled by Summers, and that was all set up by a screen that absolutely crushed Jonathan Wallace. He didn't see it coming. Well, this is where 
communication is so important. And you, if you're Patrick Ewing Jr., you got to be calling out that screen so your teammate can at least put a hand out. If you call a screen left, he'll stick his left hand out so he can feel. That time Wallace felt nothing but pain. That's right. And now Rivers commits the foul. That's going to be the seventh foul on the Hoyas. So Notre Dame will go to the line. JT3, not a fan of that call. Well, the argument is they're going, both going for the ball right there. And yes, there's a bump, and Colin Falls gave it a little bit of the act. Look at Big John. He's still working the ref. Something's never changed. All he needs is a towel, and he would be just <laughs> like the old days. Poor, poor Bob Donato saying, man, I went through enough of this when you were actually coaching, Big John. Now, we were here getting ready to do the game. We get here about two hours before the game. An hour and a half before the game, Big John wandered in, and he stayed in that seat right behind the Georgetown bench for 90 minutes. Memory. <laughs> he hasn't budged, and he is still a large presence, even though he is no longer coaching. JT3 was on Mike and Mike this morning, and you know, one of the mics asked him about, you know, do you hear your dad when he's sitting behind the bench? And he goes, oh, yeah, he's yelling at me the entire game. He's always telling me what I'm doing wrong. Well, JT3 hasn't done a whole lot wrong in his three years coaching Georgetown. Summers with a three. He's got a dozen. Under two minutes to go in a very entertaining first half here with the Garden. Much better job that time by Patrick Ewing Jr. stepping up, pulling out the screens, and Wallace avoided it. Balls misses the three. And the rebound's going against Heron Godey of Notre Dame. And Heron Godey, he's got his hands up in the air and saying, what did I do? This <laughs> crashed into a couple of people. If you're wondering if there's some football in his background with that kind of a body, his dad played football at Indiana. His brother is a football player at Indiana. And the Notre Dame folks feel that Heron Godey might have, might have wound up there as a basketball player, had the situation not been so uncertain with Mike Davis and so forth, but uh, Mike Ray told Charlie Weiss, back off. He's a basketball <laughs> player, and he's a good basketball player. It came down to Notre Dame and Purdue, the last two schools, bidding for Heron Goody services. Well, you know the best pass rushers and the best tight ends are playing power forward on campus. So, you know, the football coaches always have That's right. a bit of a temptation. Patrick Ewing Jr. wearing his dad's number, using the same locker here at Madison Square Garden that his dad used when he played for the Knicks. Breakdown right there by Notre Dame at a time when they can't. Georgetown started to make a push. Notre Dame was enjoying a double-digit lead for much of the half. Ewing! He has really come on strong in the second half of the season. Did you see him? He caught the ball in midair, faked the pass, and froze Notre Dame. And they gave him some room for that mid-range. The lead down to four. Carter with an air ball. Didn't I tell you? Notre Dame ball. Bad shots. You yeah. start living by the three. Time to get to the rim, right? That's right. Yeah. you got to start balancing your offensive attack and not rely totally the jump shot and Russell Carter's got the capability tremendous leaper quick off the dribble but right now I guess he feels he's so hot that he can settle for the jumper Hibbert not in the game right now so a little bit easier for the Irish to contemplate going to the rim and that's what Carter does rebound brought down by the Hoyas they said they could chip away chip away because they've demonstrated balance in their offensive attack and they're starting to solve this 2-3 zone. Third foul against Heron Gody. That's his second. Zeller's got three. Kurz has two. Issues in the front court for the Irish. Well, Championship Week continues on ESPN and ESPN2 later tonight. We'll bring you the second semifinal for the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostale. Pittsburgh and Louisville. Louisville won the regular season to match up, and that was in Pittsburgh. ACC game over on ESPN 2 for you as Wake Forest takes on Virginia Tech. Well, so far, if the game plan is about attrition, Georgetown doing it. Heron Godey, again, it doesn't look like there was any 
foul there. He was taking good position on Jeff Green. I'm sure Jeff Green would have loved to be able to go to the basket on that one. A big first half for Green. Now a perfect nine for nine from the free throw line. And all of a sudden on an 8-0 run, the Irish lead is down to two, and Mike Bray is going to use a timeout. Now this Georgetown program is back near at the top of the heap in the Big East. It has been a while. The glory days back in the 80s, 1984, Syracuse and Georgetown in the Big East championship game. Michael Graham, Andre Hawkins mixing it up early. Michael Jackson sending the game to overtime, tying it at 63 in the extra session. It was all Patrick Ewing. The Hoyas pull to 71. Patrick Ewing, a two-time MVP here in the Big East Tournament and on hand to watch his son play here tonight. As mentioned earlier, the Hoyas have won six tournament titles in this conference, tied with UConn for the most, but it's been a while. These players were babies the last time at Georgetown won the Big East Championship. That was back in 1989. Time flies, eh, <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> That's one of the other things Coach Thompson Jr. and I discussed. Jackson stripped. Ball still loose. Jackson gets it back. Gets it back again, and it goes! What an effort by Tory Jackson. He's the one that was closest to the ground at 5'10. <laughs> but the Georgetown guys should be kicking themselves. Yep. Possession arrow in their favor. All they had to do was get on the floor and cover it up instead of bending over. And to reiterate, Mike Bray says the freshman Jackson and Herringote have given this team a toughness it hasn't had in a number of years. Last shot of the half, ideally for Georgetown. They'll retain possession of 5.2 to play. Let's try to figure out how Torrey Jackson got this ball up and in. Said he was the closest to the ground, but right there on a nice rebound and then the change in the air. Told about his athleticism and his toughness. There's got to be a foul there, and they did call it. And Bob Donato with a whistle on Jackson, and that will send Summers to the line. But prior to that. Dipsy doodle move. The Georgetown guys were all standing around with a loose ball and bending over and not getting on the floor as they should have. Coach Thompson was pleading with the officials when that Summers was in the act of shooting and should get three free throws there. The officials said no. Still the 10th foul on the Irish, so two free throws for Summers, who now has 13 first half points. Hey, you know, in this city, you try. <laughs> you try those things. Green and Summers carrying the Hoyas offensively. What a high scoring half. Notre Dame the best offense in the Big East. One of the best weeks on the sports calendar championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. This is the Big East Championship in New York City presented by Aero Postal semifinal number one top seeded Georgetown down two to the number four seed Notre Dame but it was a 14 point lead for the Irish at one point. Welcome back to the Garden Dan Shulman Len Elmore and Len the stars have really stepped up so far here tonight. Well, both these teams played in the afternoon yesterday but you're right the stars do come out at night and for Notre Dame Russell Carter just feeling it from behind the arc in transition as well in the half court and then Jeff Green player of the year in the Big East help Georgetown slowly chip away utilizing their advantage inside and again Green off the bounce Again, he's got the complete package and he's demonstrating every facet. Look at the first half that Jeff Green and Russell Carter had. Carter hit four threes. Green had 17 points, five rebounds, a couple assists, and a blocked shot. Dewan Summers was very big for Georgetown. He scored a 14. Colin Falls has knocked down three threes for the Irish, nearly stolen. Wallace. And we've got ourselves a tie game. Patrick Ewing Jr. and Jeremiah Rivers both starting the second half for Georgetown. And now a charge on Jackson turns it back over to the Hoyas. Well, Tory Jackson hasn't made many mistakes thus far, but that was one of them. Over penetration. Wallace pretty much set, taking away the pass to the basket. We talk about Jeff Green, though. 
Nine of nine from the free throw line. Instrumental in getting a couple of guys for Notre Dame on their front line in foul trouble. And again, Ewing starting for Hibbert here in the second half. Green. And the rebound comes down to Herringote. Ewing played with a great energy in the first half, as he always does. Kind of a bit of a contrast to the rest of his teammates. Nice feed inside and one for Rob Kurz as we check out our first half stats presented by Guinness. And great shooting for both teams, for the Irish especially from beyond the arc. And the tempo favored Notre Dame more. JT3 wanted it to be a little bit more rhythmic. Run your stuff, use the clock. Mike Bray wanted it more of an up and down affair. Definitely has been an up and down affair. Although towards the end, Georgetown started to wear Notre Dame down. I mentioned the free throws that Jeff Green took. You saw that the numbers in the paint. Georgetown definitely wants to grind it out inside. But with Roy Hibbert on the bench, I think the reason is that John Thompson III did not want Notre Dame to get off to that quick start as they did in the first half. Wanted to be able to match up, step outside, and guard people on the perimeter, something that Hibbert at his size. Just not really capable of doing. Rivers for Sap is the other change. Offensive rebound and a putback. See if it was Ewing and it was. Nine for Ewing Jr. to make it a one-point game. Aaron Gody drifting away from the basket line as he let go of that shot. Yeah, you can't take a hook shot falling away. Aaron Gody with those broad shoulders has got to go up and towards the basket. And Green getting good position. No look pass. Hoyas lead on the slam by Ewing. You about activity. Patrick Ewing Jr. is really giving Georgetown energy the moment he entered the game. Carter, his fifth three of the game. <laughs> this is fun. I think Russell Carter put a bookmark for that page in the first half. <laughs> and he'll reopen the book here in the second. Notre Dame's already scored more points in this game than they scored in the entire game against Georgetown in the loss back on January the 6th. Wallace. Look at the strong hands by Jeff Green inside at the center. Is he something else? Look at the offensive rebound. He takes it just away from Heron Gody. And then puts it on the floor and gets himself in a position where he can use that backboard. And here's the nice dish to Patrick Ewing Jr. You just saw two phases of Jeff Green that make him the player of the year in the Big East. Georgetown getting it done on the offensive glass. Ewing two years at Indiana sat out as a transfer last year. Now back to active duty. At the same school his dad played for Georgetown as we go to Mark Jones with some thoughts on the Hoyas. Yeah, guys, I spoke with John Thompson, the third coach of the Hoyas at halftime, said that he was happy with what they did offensively. They shot about 52% from the field, but defensively he was upset with the fact that they did not stop Notre Dame's three-point shooting attack. They've given up nine right now with the meter still running. Says we have to run them off the three-point line, especially not giving them open looks from three in transition. We want to make them take twos. Back to you guys. Hi, right, Mark. Thank you. Apparently, the officials are checking the scoreboard to see if the proper number of fouls on each team are up on the scoreboard. That's the word that we've been given. And now, John Thompson has been given his explanation. Mike Bray wants equal time. Now, Mike Bray seems satisfied, and John Thompson has a follow up question. Both coaches are smiling, so I guess everything's going to be all right. Somebody can count. <laughs> Tied at 52 with a spot of the Big East Championship game on the line. Our second semifinal, Louisville and Pittsburgh, 20 minutes after this one ends tonight, right here on ESPN. And that should be a terrific matchup. Louisville turned their season around with a win at Pittsburgh that ignited a current active seven game winning streak. 20 for Green. Balls off the screen. You see Rivers right up in his chest. Aaron Gody, better job using his size and momentum on that jump hook. And he was also deeper in the paint. That's the second field goal of the night for Luke Aaron Gody. Boy, Green is setting up down in the box every time down the floor. 
Ewing misses the short jumper. Well, we saw Aaron Gody, the last time he got the ball inside, was way outside the lane and took a fadeaway hook. This time, two feet in the paint. Feeling a lot more comfortable that he can use his size going to the hoop. Great story by Mike Bray. He says Heron Goaty's not the most talkative guy. He would try to talk to Heron Goaty on the phone when he's recruiting him. He said because of Heron Goaty, Mike Bray was forced to learn how to text message <laughs> and his daughter teach him how to text message because that was the easiest way for him to communicate with Heron Goaty. And it's paid off. Heron Goaty, by the way, finished third. For Mr. Basketball in his senior year in high school in the state of Indiana, behind a couple of pretty good guys in Odin and Connolly. That's Dewan Summers on the tip right there. Again, Georgetown very active around the basket, looking for second chance opportunities. Good active defense there by Summers to knock it away. Now here comes the big fella, Hibbert, back into the game. And Ewing is going to get a big ovation, and deservedly so, as he comes out. Well, you talk about a boost of energy. Patrick Ewing Jr. all over the floor on both ends. Carter has not put the ball on the floor as much as he's capable silly, of. Silly, silly, silly. It is right away, just as you talked about. And every one of his teammates is saying the same thing. Roy, why are you reaching? Make the guy shoot over you. Look at the left hand. You don't have to steal the ball. You got Heron Goaty two feet off the lane. Be smart about it. Heron Goaty's a wide body, but he's 6'8". Hibbert is 7'2". And a good shot blocker. Falls. A clean look. <laughs> and when it's a clean look on a catch and shoot, mark it down before the ball gets to the net. Irish in the 2-3. Summers. Offensive rebound, Jesse Sapp. And Green is fouled. Green to the line when we come back. Both of these teams in some kind of a zone here tonight. A spot of the finals on the line. At the line and overall, it's unbelievable how that happens every time as Green misses his Shulman, first free throw. The Shulman curse. <laughs> Terrence Williams, the shy, understated one, trying to loosen up for the game tonight. He's, loosen up. He's, he's practicing for a performance. Some. He is a piece of work, folks. Thirty seconds in his company, and you'll walk away saying, "Man, that guy is a piece of work." But he's playing some great basketball right now. Green with a block. Carter thought he was fouled by Summers. Nope, Notre Dame still looking to push the ball up the floor. And Russell Carter recognizes that he can't totally rely on the three right now, that he's got to be able to have some balance in his attack, and that was his attempt. By the way, that last foul before the break was on Kurz of the Irish, his third. So two of the big guys have three, Kurz and Zeller for Notre Dame. And you can attribute that to Jeff Green around the basket. Jackson has it blocked. It's out of bounds to Notre Dame. The Hoya players are arguing about possession, and Reggie Greenwood, I think, is going to overrule and give it, and properly so, to Georgetown. And Mike Bray calling for a foul on that, but absolutely that last one was off of Notre Dame. Blocked by Hibbert right there, and it was Carter. Got his left hand on it, got twisted around. That's why the ball went in the opposite, opposite direction, but the officials got it right. Good teamwork. Block shot for Hibbert is fourth of the night. Five minutes into the second half, Notre Dame has led almost the entire night. Led by as many as 14 midway through the first half. And the three is there for Jonathan Wallace. 47% from beyond the arc on the season. The Georgetown now has found its mojo. They're starting to move the ball, starting to attack the zone intelligently. Their challenge is on the defensive end. Is Notre Dame still precisely executing, getting open looks for their better shooters? And there's the foul call Carter was looking for last time down the floor. It'll be Summers committing his second. We saw Terrence Williams with his bounce as he's listening to his music. Carter, you talked about it, Len. Carter's got as much bounce in his game just about 
is Terrence Williams of Louisville does. He can get by just about anybody. I mean, he just looks like he's having fun. Didn't like that one, though. Hibbert blocked another one. Carter gets it back and is fouled again. He'll be shooting a couple. And it's going to be Hibbert again. It'll be number three on the big fella. Subs coming in for both teams now. Hibbert is going to come out. Played only a couple of minutes, picked up two fouls, and Ewing's going to come back in. With all the improvement that Roy Hibbert has made, the one area he's got to be cognizant of is as a big man, and you're playing defense, you never reach towards the ball. Your hands are either out extended or extended above your head. Never reach towards the offensive player on defense. And Hibbert thought he was coming out, but JT3 wants Summers. So Ewing comes in, Summers goes out, Hibbert stays. Zeller has checked back in for the Irish. I mean, it's a hard habit to break. You see the ball, you think you're going to be able to get it when guys are going after them. When you're that size, just extend your arms and take the passing lanes away and get your arms extended over your head to thwart the shooters. Notre Dame staying in the 2 3 that they played most of the night. Turn and look at it. Yep. Not looking for his offense at all tonight, Hibbert. They're starting to heat up from the perimeter, though. Jesse Saps three. Georgetown up by one. And I think the rotation John Thompson the third is using right now may be yielding some and bearing some fruit. Starting to wear down the backcourt just a little bit. Aaron Gody. Remember, Hibbert's got three. They've done a much better job containing falls. Aaron Gody inside right at the big guy. Smart move and a strong move. And it really takes the pressure off the backcourt of Notre Dame, starting to slow down a little bit. And that's what I'm talking about when I say balance. You know, force the defense to have to think about more than just the three. Now man to man for the Irish. Wallace on the drive. Hibbert not even looking at the basket. Ewing is. Ewing's outside shot has become a real factor down the stretch for the Hoyas. So you say he's using his dad's locker here. He's wearing the same number. <laughs> I think that spirit has gotten into him. A season high 13 for Ewing. Great anticipation as he knocks it out of bounds. Coach Thompson says that should be Hoya basketball, but to no avail. Let's get a Sports Center 30 at 30 now. Here's Dave Revson. Of course, Ohio State and Kansas looking for number one seeds. Falls fell after the shot, looking for the foul. No call, and the Irish turn it over to Georgetown. You know, that's an art form, what Colin Falls did. A lot of three-point shooters learn how to take the shot and kick those legs out. You saw that right leg kick in and make the contact. The officials didn't fall for it. He's had a number of four-point plays in his career. He does that as well as any player in the college game. Good hands by Jackson and a foul by Sapp. 15 foul on Georgetown this half. Foul on Georgetown this half. Got to be impressed with this freshman, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Again, it comes down to the strengths of mind for Tory Jackson. You know, if he makes a mistake, he doesn't hang his head and let it bother him. He comes at you with twice the ferocity the next time around. Balls on a switch has Hibbert on him right now. So they go down to the post to Zeller, guarded by Rivers. Hibbert just needs to stay on his feet, hands up in the air. Trying to help. Baseline jumper by Zeller comes up short. Kurz is fouled on the inside. One point lead for the Hoyas. Patrick Ewing Sr. loving what Junior is doing. Great energy here tonight. On ESPN2. 
right, Dave, well, we got a barn burner going here. Georgetown by a point over Notre Dame. Patrick Ewing Jr., a whole lot more than just an energy guy off the bench here tonight. Well, you want to look at the formula for success. You take a system that you can work in, add a little hard, actually a lot of hard work, and certainly maturity, and you get a vastly improved player. And that's what we're seeing in Patrick Ewing Jr. Didn't have a lot of success in Indiana. Came essentially back home, if you will, to Georgetown. And the wonders, it seems, that his uh, collaboration with John Thompson III has worked has been tremendous. And look what he's done on the season. But today, I think, as I said, the spirit is in him, the spirit of senior. Thompson on the bench, Ewing on the floor, just like old times for the Hoyas. And you have to give Ewing Jr. a lot of credit. He handles himself admirably because opposing fans will get on him and say, you know, daddy's better and stuff like that. And Patrick says, well, I know that. Of course he was better. <laughs> he doesn't let it bother him, but he is getting better rapidly right now in this is junior season. Well, and he's been a very important part of the Georgetown success in his role off the bench. And again, we talked about the energy, we talked about the intelligence and the maturity that he's played with. Hibbert, fortunate maybe not to get his fourth right there. Almost went over the back of Jackson for that rebound, but Georgetown has a fresh 35. Got to respect Ewing's outside shot. He's got three-point range as well. Rivers inside looking for Green, and they turn it over. He should have been looking for a shot. Jeremiah Rivers has to be a threat out there. Ball's now with Green on him. Georgetown, even when there's a cross at the ball or a high screen, not afraid to switch regardless of who's there. Jackson the kick. Floater by Kurz. And it's Georgetown ball. So what Georgetown's defense is starting to do right now is force the Irish to play on the move. No more catch and shoot. And at this end of the floor, the pace is starting to slow down. More of a Georgetown pace. Ewing, of course, puts up a quick shot as soon as we say that. And the Irish come up with a loose ball. Oh, Jackson fooled everybody. And then missed the eight-footer. Well, that was supposed to be another switch. Miscommunication by Georgetown. Tory Jackson's got to take advantage of that with that open look. Midway point of the second half. First semifinal for the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. We're at Madison Square Garden in New York City. The fourth seed, Notre Dame. The top seed, Georgetown, as Jonathan Wallace gives the Hoyas the lead. Eight for Wallace, his second three of the night. Also, the Carters had a big night from the perimeter. Not this time. Rebound green. Normally you'd say that yeah, it might not be a good shot in this time and score situation, but the way Carter's been burying him, you kind of don't mind it. And almost taking it down. How about Jeff Green now, Len? 21 points and 10 rebounds already. Player of the year in this league, and deservedly so. Ewing absorbs the bump, misses the shot. Rebound, Notre Dame. Falls. Again, tried to convince the officials he was fouled. Told me before the game, this is pretty exciting. He's never had a chance to play on Friday here in New York. The Irish have always been eliminated on a Wednesday or Thursday. But right now, momentum swinging in the direction of the Hoyas. They are up a deuce. All right, Dave, well, it's been wild down in Tampa, the side of the ACC tournament, although things are starting to settle down a little bit. North Carolina pounded Florida State. BC needed overtime to beat Miami. Virginia leading NC State, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest still to come. Semis tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. Well, after a wild Thursday, it looks as though at least it could be, at least on paper, the top four seeds ultimately playing the way it was planned. But how about some props to Sydney Lowe? I mean, NC State looked as though that they were going to be bringing up the rear in the ACC, and all of a sudden, this team has progressed. They've grown, and first-year coach getting it done. Jeff Green misses the turnaround. He's a great guy to find an opening in the middle of that 2-3 zone, but he was strong on the jumper.
Too many big bodies to lob inside on Georgetown with much effectiveness, but it winds up in a Hoya foul, and it'll be Ewing. Patrick Ewing Jr. has been one of the best players in this game, and a little love from JT3. A little love and a little advice, too. I'm sure he's telling them you don't always have to shoot the ball. A couple of maybe ill timed shots when you had a chance, maybe to tell you, to utilize a little patience. But you don't want to kill the enthusiasm. You don't want to diminish the confidence with a guy like that who has brought energy, who's not thinking, he's just going out there playing as he should. He's getting big minutes tonight. Limited effect. So far tonight for Roy Hibbert and Ewing is taking most of his minutes as the Irish have tied it at 67. Well, this is just not a game for Roy Hibbert. It's too up tempo. The zone is with a strong guy like Aaron Doty down in the middle of that, pushing Hibbert off the block. You've got to pick your spots if you're John Thompson the third and search the big man. So the Roy Hibberts and Aaron Graves would almost rather play against each other as good as each one of them is. But against some of the other teams that have more quickness and mobility. Carter, this is where he's tough. That is what Russell Carter can do as well as any player in this league. Well, it's not just the ability to get to the spot, but then to elevate. Once he elevates, particularly with guards on him, all they can do is sit and watch. And another example, as we mentioned early in the game in this league, of a player who hardly played as a freshman. Toiled behind upperclassmen, worked hard, and became a great player. Aaron Goaty with a block to knock it out of bounds. The Irish are up by two. Both of these teams stepping up here at the Garden. Going on here in the Big East. And another one still to come. Semifinal of the Big East Championship presented by Aero Post Off. Pittsburgh and Louisville right after this one. Here tonight here on ESPN and over on ESPN2. Continuing coverage of the ACC Tournament. Quarterfinal action between Wake Forest and Virginia Tech. 7-14 to go. Notre Dame on top by two. Notre Dame basketball. What a job by Torrey Jackson. Well, we mentioned it last night, and the Bears repeating, you got to come meet the ball. And Summers knew the ball was coming him up in the air. Get to it first. You know some freshmen land get into this building or this tournament for the first time and really look nervous at the outset Jackson has played two great games in this tournament. It'll stay with the Irish and a fresh 35. Well you come in here with a little bit of trepidation you get out here and you warm up and stuff and all of a sudden you can you know you can feel the vibe that this is basketball Mecca and you embrace it that attempted layup by the way from falls. As Georgetown is going to try to take the lead. Boy, did the Hoyas fly down the floor, and the Irish got caught. And they also flew down the floor to tend to their big man, their best player, as he got hammered right there. Number Watch three on Herringo. Watch the pirouette. How difficult is it to pirouette and pick up the ball again? On the catch and then make that kind of move to the basket. You got to know where you are on the floor. Never put it down and drew the foul. Hibbert has returned as Green tries to give the Hoyas the lead. The 11th lead change of this game. Carter by Ewing. Carter gets it back, and Hibbert's picked up number four. And that was a tough one right there because Hibbert didn't really do anything. That time, he just got his hands up. Carter did a nice job of drawing the contact. Look at this flurry right here. Watch Carter get it. Hibbert's just standing there. Right there. He actually he did reach with his left hand. I saw it. The signal Reggie Greenwood, the official who made the call, gave was that the hands of Hibbert yeah, he'll come down. And, his left arm yeah. did come down. So he'll come out. Good things are happening for Notre Dame when Russell Carter is being aggressive and going right into the teeth of that Georgetown defense. Well, you look at the way Russell Carter is built right now. He should have no fear of anything. <laughs> 
You know, the taxi cabs will stop for him <laughs> crossing the street here in New York. Couple of big misses, but an offensive rebound, and Heron Gody is picked off by Green. He's as smart as he is talented. What a performance tonight from Jeff Green. We got a timeout on the floor and a chance, I believe, for us to revisit that great play. We're well, going to take a look right here at, at um, Jeff Green right here. And he's just going to be laying in wait. He's watching Heron Gody the whole time. And just like a good DB reading the quarterback's eyes, the interception and the score. Something infuriating John Thompson. The official still conferring. You can see the night Jeff Green is having statistically the biggest night of his season and he's a guy generally his statistics statistics don't do him justice he's a better player than his numbers would indicate but tonight his numbers are keeping right up with him and all's well that ends well between coach Thompson and the officials well I think there was some kind of contact between Heron Gody and Patrick Ewing Jr. and it looked as though the officials called a foul but obviously it's not Apparently. and maybe said the fact that they decided timeout there was, was no foul right the timeout was called before the foul Carter Deep three, not there. Jackson at 5'10, the offensive rebound. Kurz can't get a shot off. Heron Gody's elbow jumper. Jackson again going up for the offensive rebound. Oh. It comes to Green and a silly foul by Heron Gody. I was just, he took the words right out of my mouth. Hustle is one thing, but at this point in time, Heron Gody's so valuable for Notre Dame and kind of making the same mistakes as Hibbert. You see the hard shot right there? And then just stepping in with both hands on the chest instead of coming in with the hands up in the air. And, you know, that's a huge, huge problem for Notre Dame. This is the guy most active on the board, the one that a lot of the Georgetown guys try to stay away from when he's playing his uh, Tasmanian Devil act. On the and for the first time tonight, you see a little frustration from some of the Irish players as Ewing's jumper gets down a five-point lead. You see a different look in the eye of Russell Carter, who has had such a confident air about him here tonight. The Irish are being mentally tested right now by this Georgetown run. Still five and a half to go. Jesse Sapp up till now has done a terrific job on Colin Fault, making him put it on the floor, not allowing him to catch and shoot, totally taking him out of his comfort zone. Ewing a steal. Everything going the Hoyas way. They're on a 7-0 run right now. They lead by five. The winner goes to the championship game tomorrow against the winner of our next game tonight, Pittsburgh and Louisville. Again, good position for Green. How good is he? The best in the Big East. And a timeout. By Notre Dame. The player of the year in the Big East is having one of the best nights of his career. The expression has not changed all night long, but he has been the star of stars here tonight. And never was phased when Georgetown fell behind early. And by a lot, Jeff Green instrumental in just chipping away, chipping away at the Notre Dame lead. Take a look at him right here. Double team grabbed and the strength, which is one of the more underrated aspects of his and then here the anticipation and the athleticism and the finish. A career high 27 points tonight for Jeff Green. He kept them in it in the first half when they looked like they were in danger of getting blown out of here. They were down to 14 at one point, but now they've got themselves their largest lead of the game. They're up seven under five minutes to go. College basketball on ESPN continues tomorrow right here Madison Square Garden. It's the Big East Championship game. The winner of this one against the winner of the Louisville Pitt game 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. The Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal all a part of Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods.
Pittsburgh, by the way, trying to get back to the final of the Big East Championship for the sixth time in seven years. Well, you know, if you looked at Georgetown yesterday against Villanova, had a big lead and pretty much second half for shooting, let Villanova back in the ball game. Here, they're on the other end of the stick. And again, I think that they probably learned something that you can get back in the game. Yeah. But it has to be methodical and it has to be done with calmness and execution of the game plan. Jack spins, hangs, and hits and draws the foul. Big play after big play by the smallest guy on the court. Well, again, this is just isolation, and you talk about confidence. There's the bump. And the hang, and again, the smallest guy in the court, as you mentioned, at 5'10", still not afraid to get into that paint. 13th point of the night, the foul, the third on Summers. The Irish, a potent offensive team, the highest scoring team in the Big East this year. They can get back into a game in a hurry. Can they get the necessary stops at the other end of the floor? Summers. Rebound Irish. Good defensive sequence right there by Notre Dame. Took away Jeff Green inside. Another spin and take. This kid is something else. Not a starter at the beginning of the year. Kyle McElarney's backup until McElarney was suspended. You get a feeling the job is his right now. McElarney hopes to be back next year and may play alongside Jackson in the Notre Dame backcourt. And McElarney was putting up numbers offensively, but while he hit. Five in a row for Torrey Jackson, and Notre Dame's got the ball back. Ooh. Lazy pass. We got Jesse Sapp on his heels right now. He doesn't want to get beaten off the bounce again. He just did. He just did. And it's tied again. What a game. Well, you talked about it in the first half. Last year, Mike Bray felt his team wasn't tough enough, both mentally and physically. And the two freshmen, Heron Godin, and you see Torrey Jackson, have brought a toughness to this team that they've never experienced before. Notre Dame can take the lead. It's going to be Jackson again, but he misses the layup. Curls is fouled by Summers. Number four on Summers. Do not go anywhere over the next 254. We're tied at 76. And the smallest guy, the freshman Tory Jackson, stepping up large for the Irish here in the Big East Tournament. Now, Dave, if only there were some good games during championship week. <laughs> 76 76 let's introduce you to Tory Jackson well Tory Jackson obviously coming out of his bag of tricks look at himself going to the right and then the killer crossover somebody better check their ankles and get him retake as he takes it back and look at him the smallest man on the floor obviously closest to the ball but gets his own rebound and like a magician presto and then he does his disappearing act with the spin move <laughs> to the hoop we talked about that toughness where does it come from how would you like to be the second youngest of 14 children? Tory Jackson has nine older brothers. That'll, that'll get you some toughness. Get that spin move working a little bit quicker. You've got to be quick to get anything in a house with nine older brothers. That's right. Nobody's going to give you anything. You've got to go take it. Roy Hibbert is checked back in for Georgetown. Georgetown wants to make this a half court ball game right now specifically to take advantage of Hibbert. The Irish are having none of it as they try to press full court. Speed them up. Hibbert and Summers each playing with four fouls right now for Georgetown. Wallace's floater ties the game. Always under control. Jonathan Wallace the junior from Harvest Alabama.
Ball's a quiet second half. Kerr's open for three. Russell Carter up above the crowd, but couldn't corral it. Well, again, with the full court pressure, Georgetown elects to attack. And Wallace, see, the thing that gives them confidence, he knows he's got guys that can go get it off the glass, although you didn't see a gray shirt in the picture. They weren't going to get the offensive rebound had he missed. But it is all about confidence for the Georgetown guards. Irish in the 2 3 as they've been most of the night. Hibbert looking for his. Somehow he got it. <laughs> Just the third field goal of the night for Hibbert, but it's a big one. Carter splits the defense. And Kirsch is going to dribble it out of there. And you look at the attention Falls gets. Jackson kept it alive, went after it. And the foul is on Wallace of the Hoyas. And both Thompsons. Upset about that call. What does this game mean? Well, the winners go to the final of the Big East Championship. Georgetown has not been there since 96, hasn't won it since 89. Notre Dame's never been there since joining this league. The Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal, Dan Schulman, Len Elmore, Mark Jones in what has been a riveting, fascinating game from the moment it began. Well, you're right. John Thompson III exploded off the bench on that play. Feeling that if anything, it was just a hustle play. The friendly bounce for the freshman. One of two, one point lead for the Hoyas with the ball and about 36 to go. Watch Roy Hibbert work in the short corner and the block. Summers off the feed from Green draws the foul. The thing that opened that up for Summers is that everybody's paying attention to Roy Hibbert with two guys out of that zone on the back line trying to pinch him. And Summers with a nice job of turning, locating, and then making up the space. Number four on Luke Zeller. So two players on each team with four fouls. He's on the bench with four, but now as we say that, he's going to come back in. He'll take over for Zeller. Rivers will come in for Sapp. Rivers getting some crunch time minutes here for the Hoyas. And here comes Ewing again. And Wallace will come out. You've got to believe we're going to see Wallace back in when Georgetown gets the ball back. Ewing, if you haven't been with us the entire night, has been terrific. Just terrific off the bench. Actually started the second half for the Hoyas. Having a little conversation with Colin Falls on this trip down the floor. Line pass finds Falls. Rebound Jackson. A minute to go. Carter for three. Somebody's out of the game. It's going to be Hibbert. Roy Hibbert's fouled out. He and Herringote got all tangled up, and Hibbert has fouled out. And John Thompson Jr. looking and saying, just like old times. Take a look at a long shot right here. He did have a hook behind Herringote. Look at his left arm hooking Herringote. Herringote pushing him out. You could have probably called a no call on that since both of those guys had to wrap, but the official call. From behind, Heron Goldie had Hibbert around the side. And you probably had about three or four calls in that yeah. one play that you could have made. Hibbert never really able to get on track tonight. Did have five block shots. Was not much of a factor at all at the offensive end. And Georgetown's offense actually seemed to flow better with him on the bench. And Green finding that spot at the foul line in the middle of that zone. Well, that's because, again, Notre Dame was successful in executing a game plan and making this an up-tempo game. Pushing the ball, moving it around quickly. Aaron Gody, a very good free throw shooter. 82%. He's got two coming. Four for four tonight. 
not just a big guy who bangs into people. He's pretty skilled as well. We haven't seen it tonight, but he's very capable of knocking down 12 to 14 foot jumpers as well. A nice soft touch, something unusual for a guy that size. Good form. I'm sure he's doing plenty of work. One of two. Long rebound. Notre Dame ball. Falls his hustle created that opportunity. And now Rivers will come back in. Sap will go out. Under a minute to go. Let's see. Yep, that's the right call. Kurz has to race way back down to the other end of the floor. Now here's Jackson, a freshman who did not become a starter until the middle of the season. Has had a fantastic game tonight. Got Summers on him. He's going to the rim. High screen. Georgetown willing to switch. With the big guy and the little guy, and they paid the price. Remember, Mike Bray said to the seniors, you got to help Malone, guys, until he gets comfortable. He's comfortable. Well, they certainly want to go to Torrey Jackson as often as they could. Again, that high screen of force to switch, and Torrey Jackson, great recognition and going straight to the hole. Well, are we going to play more than 40 minutes tonight? Five years ago, these two teams battled in the longest game in Big East history. So we'll play five minutes more, and maybe more than that. <laughs> my friends, let's go for four. Oh, my Four goodness. overtime. <laughs> you are witness to one of the most dramatic games in the history of the Big East, and there have been many. That was a regular season game. We had a double overtime game here in this tournament last night. Louisville over West Virginia is 40 minutes going to be enough to decide this one. Big John got here at 5.30. Sat in that seat 90 minutes. The game hasn't budged. And 35 seconds might not be enough to settle this one. Patrick Ewing must have enjoyed the display that his son has put on here tonight. And remember, we talked about Roy Hibbert. He fouled out. Remember early in the first half, the silly foul, the reach, and yep. then another one over Heron Godey's back? And I said before that you are going to wish that you had those fouls back. But if this would be a perfect opportunity to have Roy Hibbert in the game for Georgetown, looking to take the last shot, even though there's a 5.4 differential between the shot clock and the game clock, but they want to run that amount of time to be able to set up. Wallace back in to quarterback the offense. Next foul is the seventh on the Irish. As Len mentioned, a five and a half second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Green's been the man all night. And the foul. Player of the year. Well, it's just a one on one situation. Heron Gody with four fouls. Knew he had to contest it. Certainly didn't want to foul. Sometimes you get a big body. In any type of action, they're going to pick on you. Look at the reaction of the bench. Oh, yeah. 30th point of the night for Jeff Green. Heron Gody has fouled out. So Kurz and Zeller will be in the front court. If Green makes the free throw, three point game, 13 seconds to go. We all know the Irish can shoot the threes. It's not over yet. Green has had a magnificent game tonight, including at the free throw line. 12 of 13. Well, believe it or not, we've come back to the adage live by the three. Yeah. And you might have to perish by it. They won't need it. Necessarily, best shot available, under 10 to go. Carter! Wallace the rebound. And smart, smart, yep. smart play. 
He saw the clock and he killed the clock. Georgetown beats Notre Dame in a thriller here at the Garden, 84 to 82. The top seed survives, and the Hoyas are going to the final for the first time in 10 years. A despondent Russell Carter being consoled by John Thompson.